Welcome to Derek Does. Today, we're gonna do this. Hi everybody, welcome back to Derek Does. Today, I'm gonna do something uh, a little different. I'm gonna show you, it's kind of a DIY project. I'm gonna show you how you can bring back an old leather jacket or leather chair or anything that's old and leather like this that's obviously seen better days. It hasn't been conditioned probably since day one. Um, I'm gonna show you how to do it. I've done this many times on jackets. I've done it on leather chairs. I've done it on all sorts of leather items. Um, and this is gonna be one of them. And I thought this would be a good project. And what I'm gonna do, I'll show you. This is an old uh, Californian uh, horse hide jacket, but they call it a pony hide uh, jacket. But it's uh, a really great brand, Californian, one of the best out there for the vintage stuff. It's a great jacket. It's a half belt and it's kind of my size. I saw it on eBay last week and um, the guy had a really low price on it because it has, obviously it has some issues. Uh, I made a bid and um, he accepted it. I just got it yesterday and I thought this would be a great opportunity to show you how to bring a leather jacket back uh, so it has another 50 years of use. So let's get started. I'm gonna, I'll put the jacket on so you can see uh, just how it looks and I'll do some close-ups uh, hanging so you can also see the leather and then I'm going to show you the product I'm going to be using and how I do it. I'm going to do it and this will be a couple day video so my clothes will probably change for the next time but for this time let me show you uh, the jacket what we're going to be what we have to deal with. So here's the jacket on you can see it's, it fits me really nicely. I really kind of like this jacket. Uh, I'll have to see if I can see the size. I don't know if I really looked yet. Uh, it wasn't on the main tag, but it might be in the pocket of the size. It's definitely a 42 or a 44. Uh, and it doesn't, I mean, it looks great as is, but it just really could really, really use some conditioner. You can just, the patina is fantastic, but the conditioner will just bring the leather back and the patina should after I apply the conditioner over a day the patina will start to come back it won't be quite as faded but you'll still see it all and it'll still look great so um, I'll show you the jacket it also has a couple of spots some uh, a couple tears here and a tear here I may not get into that today on this video but I'll show you what I will be using to repair it uh, and I'll show you um, the issues and that sort of thing. So again, here's the jacket and then I will do a um, comparison so you can see up close everything and then we'll start to restore the jacket. And now this, this process will work on jackets, it'll work on leather chairs, it'll work on couches, it'll work on anything that's leather uh, that's a big piece of leather. Also like little stuff, you can also use the same product for little leather things like a sheath or something like that. Uh, even a belt, it works great on that. I've done it on pretty much everything. I've gone through a whole tub of this already uh, over restoring things and uh, I just love the product. It works really great and I have no complaints on it so I thought I'd show you. So I'm gonna throw it up and you can kind of see the, uh, I'll do some close-ups and then we'll start to uh, restore a jacket. I'll show you. So here's the jacket before I've done anything. This is as I got it. Uh, you can see it's just, it's real soft, uh, almost, not that it's worn through, but you can definitely tell where it's been worn. Uh, it's a nice Californian. Uh, there's the, the tag, California Pony Hide, which is the same as horse hide, only it's from ponies and not horses. Uh, it's got the uh, eyelets that are, uh, most California has kind of a unique one. I haven't seen other ones that do this where they actually sew the eyelet holes for the vents. Uh, I've had a couple Californians over the years. Really nice. It just has a little button for display. It's not doesn't do anything. There's no actual cuffs. Uh, you have two flap uh, pockets on this particular jacket here. Plus you have two jackets uh, with the talon pulled down here and here and then a talon zipper uh, and we'll get to that. The zipper seems to be pretty decent. Uh, it doesn't seem that bad uh, and it's a nice the old black and one. So what I'll do on the zipper is I'm just going to run beeswax. When I'm all done I'll run beeswax up and down all this and then try to get it into this area too. Beeswax works really great for old zippers to give it that lubrication. 
Uh, and here's this cuff. And then on this side, you'll see it has a couple areas of problems there, where it's actually holes all worn through it. So obviously this person was a right-handed person and uh, somehow wore it through there. Uh, and I'll show you how we're going to fix that. Uh, and on this, which side is it? This side has a tear here. Now, unfortunately, it's actually torn on the leather itself, so I can't re-sew that back, but I have uh, an idea how I'm going to fix that. But you can see the patina. It's great, but it really needs some work. Luckily, this didn't hang up on a hanger its whole life, because otherwise this would be ripped out here and here. Old jackets on hangers is a bad thing, because it does uh, mess them up. And here you can see uh, the back. It has um, just a button. Uh, so there's two buttons in there for, instead of a, a buckle to pull it, uh, it has buttons, which, you know, just kind of goes with the whole thing. And it's also um, got that, uh, what do they call that, the by swing back uh, to give it a little more easy maneuverability. But it's a classic half belt. You have the half belt here, and then um, it's a classic horse, and that's the jacket. So we are going to start, uh, I'm going to show you how to start restoring this. So the main product I'm going to use on this, and this is the product I've used uh, on many jackets. I've, I've even used this, uh, I had an old BMW um, from 90, what was it, 92? And the leather seats had been, you know, just from the sun and everything. And I used this product and it, <laughs> the seats look almost brand new. It's this Picard's, uh, or Picard, no S, but I call it Picard's. It's Picard Antique Leather Dressing. Uh, and I'll put a link down below where you can pick this up. I think Amazon carries it. I may have even got this one at Amazon. I think the other one I got, when I first bought this, might have been from a store, or maybe I ordered it directly from Picard, because they have other styles of dressing. Uh, but this one, this antique one, is made specifically for old leather like this, as opposed to new leather, just to get a nice coat or a pair of boots or something like that. For old leather, I use this antique uh, dressing from Picard's. And I'm going to show you how I put it on, uh, and how I get this jacket set up uh, to do it. So let's take a look at that. All right, so what I do first is I have a wet paper towel, and I just kind of go over it. It's not really that bad. It's not like I found this in a barn and it's covered in dirt. Uh, one interesting thing is you can see this is the original color on the collar. Uh, that's what the jacket was. It was like this rich brown, and that's pretty much all gone now. You don't have to go crazy. Uh, you just kind of want to wipe it down. Again, the when I and actually we'll take off this, we'll unbutton the sides here so we can get in there with our leather conditioner. If we can get in there, I don't think it's un been unbuttoned for quite a while. Yeah, it's got a little. See that? It's almost like a. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's almost like a, a moldish. Uh, it's not really, it's just, it could be like from years ago. But all you want to do is just kind of wipe that down. Any place that, you know, dust could gather. Uh, not that it's terrible to use the product uh, once it's going, but um, so we'll undo that. This has the same situation. Wipe that down, just get it clean. And you can see on this side, where the sun really hasn't touched it, is the same as the collar. It's this nice brown, but the other side is all done. We'll get under the armpit too, just because dust can kind of get stuck there over the years. And also in this by swing area. I'm not going to worry with, um, what's in the pocket there? Oh, apparently this was at an auction at one time. Uh, number 340, uh, 
Robinson Auction in Orleans, Indiana. There you go. You find the coolest stuff in old jackets sometimes. Uh, I don't know about the inside pocket. I don't feel anything. The lining's actually really good in this jacket, if you notice. Uh, so that's why I was kind of excited about it, because I know I can get this leather back. All right, so you can see it's not that dirty. It's a little dirty, but it's not that bad. But we're going to use the Picards. Uh, this is brand new, actually, because I just finished the previous one I used, but I, I like it so much that I needed another thing. So we're going to use a brand new one. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a little piece of cloth, and I'm going to use that to rub the entire jacket down with this Picards. So I got a little piece of cloth. You don't need a big piece of cloth. You can wear gloves if you want to. Um, the main ingredients on this, I don't know if it even has it on here. Uh, I've never really had a problem with the gloves, but you know, I might do it because it's a big jacket and it's gonna be really greasy afterwards. So let me get some gloves too. I'm just gonna start to put on and you can see here, I just get some on here and you're gonna see, uh, I'll start up here at the top here. And what you wanna do is you just kinda of wanna rub it in, kind of in circles. And keep in mind that leather is an item that needs oil in it. It's what it's made for. I mean, it's not what it's made for, but you know what I mean, it's, it has to be nourished because if it isn't then it dries out and eventually it gets what they call a, a dry rot and then the leather particles themselves kind of break apart and uh, it just doesn't uh, it doesn't last anymore and it's ruined I put a pretty healthy coat on uh, when I do it because we're gonna wipe this off after a day of letting it just kind of soak in there. And you don't want to like super coat it, but you want to make sure that every little piece is getting a nice little nourishment. And you can even see here, I don't know if you can see that or not, where it's been touched and where it hasn't been touched. You can also do this on a flat table. It doesn't be, you don't have to hang it up. I just hung it up here so you guys could see it as I'm working on it. Again, I get a nice little dollop and I rub it on there. I try to do panels. That way I don't forget anything. So I'll work on this whole panel and I'll probably speed up this video too, so you don't have to watch the whole thing. So uh, I've done the jacket. What I eventually actually did is I laid it down on the ground uh, just to make it easier. Uh, and that's something you might want to do. I originally put this up here just so you could see me working on it, but it was just easier flat. It put a piece of paper down uh, just so that you don't get oil or the grease on your floor. Uh, and then what I do I didn't use that much of it. I, I leave the, ba the rag in there so the next time I need it, I have it right there. Uh, so what I'll do is, I'll just wipe this down because I had greasy fingers uh, putting it together. I'm going to show you the jacket. Again, use a literal amount of stuff. Put it on there and the friction of you rubbing it will actually help it melt into the to the leather. And the leather itself will absorb it because it's so dry. Uh, particularly this jacket. Any old jacket you get that's to this point, you're going to notice it's super dry and it'll just absorb that oil. Now there's some things you shouldn't put on leather and you can look those up. Um, I, don't, I don't know, maybe I'll put a list down here of things I would not put on a, a vintage jacket. This Picard is great. Uh, so let me now show you. Now you may get just from your fingers, oil, you might get a little on the lining on the inside, but I think that'll dissipate over time. And again, it's an old jacket. I don't care. You shouldn't care either because if you wanted a perfect jacket, don't have an old jacket because um, <laughs> that's what old jackets are about. So let me show you, and, I, and you're going to see the jacket kind of, it almost looks wet 
uh, even though it's not wet, but it's just all that uh, oils and greases are absorbing it. And I'm already seeing um, where I've done it on the back here, some of the uh, horse hide starting to pucker uh, to get that really nice grain that it wasn't there when I started. Uh, and so the, the start to might, I might start to see more grain, more jerky on this jacket. So let me get close ups and I'll show you. Here you can see, see how shiny this is now? You can still see the patina that was there, only it's just not quite as much. That's a little piece of fabric that stuck to it. You can still, I, this is okay leaving little bits because that'll get soaked in. It's gonna soak for, here's that grain I was talking about. See how that's starting to show through? Uh, and again, I took everything apart to grease everything and you can see it has a nice coat of grease and it's everywhere. It's underneath it, it's inside. You have a little bit of leather here. Don't forget that. Uh, also don't forget the edges of the leather. Get along the edges of the cuff and the, the waist and along the edges of here, just so that it gets everywhere. Now this is where the issue is going to be where I'll have to repair this. Uh, as you can see, it's actually cut. If it wasn't cut, I could actually re-sew that, but it hasn't come unsewn. It just because it's become, the leather itself has become so fragile there where it gets uh, bent and the leather was so old because it hadn't been nurturized with uh, a good coat of grease or oil and that sort of thing, that's going to happen. Now this side you see is still there. It's just pulled out a little bit. And then I'll also have to repair down here and I'll show you what I'm going to do on that uh, on the next part of this. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to let this sit for like a day and tomorrow we will wipe it down with a clean cloth just to get any of it out and you're going to see quite a difference. We are back. This is day day two but technically day three. I let this sit basically for two days and that's fine. You can let this sit for a week if you want. You just let the, the oils just soak in uh, and then we're going to do, I have a clean old towel and I'm just going to wipe down basically the entire thing uh, and what we'll do is this will wipe off all the excess. It'll actually give the leather a little bit of a polish too. Uh, but the main thing is just to get all that excess uh, the card off. Now this takes a little bit of time. You want to make sure you get everywhere. Um, so take your time and just wipe everything down. The nice thing about this is a nice soft cloth so it doesn't hurt the leather at all. And kind of just just not can't really go with the grain but just just go in one direction for the most part just to wipe it that way you're not giving stress to the leather as is make sure you get in between the seams too because that's where a lot of the excess goes so what i'm going to do um so i'm going to lay it on the ground just like i did before and I'll start wiping everything down that way. Just that way it gets a nice, I can get in there. It's easier than on a hanger moving around. But I did that just so you guys could see what I'm doing. All right, so we have now wiped down the entire jacket. Again, uh, just using a soft cloth. Uh, I just use an old towel. You just kind of wipe it down gently. You don't want to get too aggressive with it. Because again, it's an old jacket. Uh, and you can see, you can really see how much it's absorbed uh, and how just that completely almost white leather has now come back a little bit. You can see where this is where it was folded for a long time. I think this laid flat somewhere and that's why we have this fold here and then we also have a fold on the other side. Uh, but like if you look on the back, here's the original color and you can see uh, it's still faded. I mean, the fade's there, but um, it's just not as bad as it was. Uh, so it's all come in here and we'll just let this continue just to finish soaking, just absorbing everything. Uh, the few other things that I like to do on an old jacket 
is uh, I get some beeswax. I've got just a little bar of beeswax. I've got a big one too. But uh, what I'll do is on the zipper itself, just kind of run it, open up the leather in between and move your beeswax and let the zipper kind of catch what's there. Now, of course, this only works on uh, metal zippers. And then you can move your uh, zipper and you'll actually feel the zipper. It kind of cuts through it easier now that has has a little bit of, uh, compared to where it doesn't, you can feel it. It's just a lubrication. Uh, doesn't do anything to hurt the jacket. And uh, it just kind of adds a little extra so that that zipper uh, works great. And then it doesn't give stress to the, uh, the seams at the bottom where the zippers, you know, that you're trying to pull it up. So I'm gonna do that uh, later, but I'm gonna do that on the main zipper. And I'm gonna try to do it on these chest ones. So these chest ones are sometimes tough because they don't get open very often. And the jacket, I'm assuming this jacket's from uh, probably the late 40s. So it's been quite a while for that. Now, there are a couple more issues on this particular jacket. Hopefully, you'll get a jacket that isn't as bad as this one. Not that this one's bad, but it has that, like I showed you, the uh, rip on the actual leather on uh, the uh, shoulder right here. And then also on the right hand, we have these holes that are pretty, pretty obvious. Thing. You can't really stitch that up because it's actually torn away. So what I've done in the past with some pretty good success is I use this product called Tear Mender. I did a lot of research looking up stuff in the past and this is like this old time instant fabric and leather adhesive. And I've used this before and it actually works pretty well. Uh, so it's like this, it looks like Elmer's glue, but I, I think it's a different type of glue that's set up. And what you do is you get a little piece of cloth, maybe or canvas or something a little substantial. You can even use leather. And then you uh, put your pieces on the inside where, uh, well, first you could, you could actually, at a hole like this size, I would probably glue the actual piece of fabric or leather, what I'm gonna use, I'm not sure what I'm gonna use yet. And I put it in, make sure it's bigger than the actual hole. You put that in there and then you can probably, and I think I'll be able to do this, you kind of place where the tears are and you can put a little uh, glue on that also and it'll hold it down and it uh, should, should hold it. Now, it's not gonna be like an end-all fix for everything. Uh, I might even try it up here on the collar with just a, a piece of stuff just to hold it. The other option I have on here is I could actually sew it uh, and that would be exposed uh, thread from here to there but it may be what I have to do on this particular jacket um, to get that to go. Because obviously I can't wear it with uh, a hole there. I need to get that because if I'm going to be moving it, that hole could get bigger. And I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to put the jacket on now, show you now the post uh, oiling of the jacket. Now this, this technique works for, works for anything leather. Uh, works for chairs. I've done that a few times on leather couches, chairs. Uh, it works on bags. It works on shoes, it works on belts, it works on anything leather. You just put it on there, you let it sit, and then you wipe it off, and you'll be amazed at how the leather just kind of comes back to life a little bit from uh, just from years of losing all that nutrients that it has inside it. So let me do some uh, putting it on, and I'll show you what it looks like on. All right, so here is the jacket. Uh, it's been oiled, and you can see it definitely uh, has a bit of a glow to it that it did not have before. So it looks like a normal leather jacket almost. You know, like a new leather jacket has that freshly, you know, soaked in tanning oils and things into it. The Picard kind of does that. So um, I haven't done the sides, I haven't zipped it up, or buttoned it up, because it says buttons on the side. But just to give you an idea how much nicer and uh, just over time, with me wearing this too, it'll start to break in even more with just the heat from my body. And that's the main thing on leather. If you ever try to break in a leather jacket, the, the best advice I could give you is to wear it. Uh, and you're gonna notice, you're like, you'll complain, oh, it's too hard, it's too stiff, it's too, I can't move around in it. Put it on and your body's natural uh, 
heat will actually soften the leather and as you wear it and you move your arms and that sort of thing it'll start to soften up and it'll actually kind of fit to you a little bit not like a pair of jeans but but close um i know with a2s a lot of guys will actually even sleep in their jackets sometimes uh just so they get a nice a nice good uh wear on it but as you can see it's it uh, is it twice as good looking than it was when i first got it at least i think so uh because it even has that squeaky uh leather sound now so overall i think it looks great uh i'm pretty happy with this i'm going to do the zipper and then i'm going to start to work on the actual repairs i may not do them tonight i may let this kind of just dry overnight a couple more days and then get in there and try to do it um but i'm going to try and i'm going to i think it's going to be pretty pretty sweet jacket by the time i'm done with it and this is something that you can do too you can find an old jacket get a great price on it because it doesn't look that sweet but then you can turn it into a great jacket that you can wear all the time and it looks even better because it's got some wear and stuff on it uh, if you like this sort of content please subscribe comment uh, let me know if you find a cool jacket or if you have questions about this uh, or uh, leather chairs or whatever you have uh, the cards uh, again they'll put the link down below that you can go get your own uh, jar of it or tub whatever you want to call it and uh, I'll even see if I can find that tear mender I'll throw that up there too uh, because um, I like it, it seems to work. Uh, if you know of a way that's better than this, let me know. Uh, I'd be happy to uh, listen to it and, and try it out on my next one too, if, if it sounds like it'd uh, be better than what I'm currently doing. Uh, so here it is, and then um, I'll put a side-by-side -side towards the end and you can see um, what it looks like. But I'll put it up on the hanger and do a close-up and you can take a look at it before we go. So here's the jacket, uh, just hung up, I'll do some close-ups. Uh, take a look at it. You can really see. I mean, look at the, the shine on that now. Uh, it's really soaked it in. This isn't near as fragile feeling as it was beforehand. And you can really see the original color of the jacket was this uh, rich brown. You know, but it's just worn away. Uh, but it's come back a little bit. You can see the grain coming in now on this horse, which is really nice. There again, that's the original. And here's uh, just started the zipper process, but um, moves up and down nicely. Here's where I'll be fixing, and you can see it again. Here, I'll turn it this way. That's going to be repaired. So don't let something like that freak you out uh, in buying something like that because it can be can be restored. You can even even put a whole leather piece in there. Uh, to cover it over if, if you have to, if we get to that point. And I'll flip the other side. Show you the back. It's just so much better. Just make sure you get all the little stuff out of the little crannies uh, because with this uh, by swing, I had to get into there. But that's been taken care of and I'll button this back up. I'm pretty happy with this jacket. It's a nice half belt. And you can see here where the grain's really coming through nicely too.